Hello, Claire, Aaron, Hannah, Isaac, Jesse, Lucy, and Rena. I think that was in alphabetical order. Uh, today we're going to have a demo of carbon or graphite dust. And this right here is my graphite dust. Mr. Meldrum actually made that for me by just using sandpaper and rubbing the lead from a pencil onto the sandpaper and then collecting it. And I think I probably have about a, almost a tablespoon and that would probably be enough for a good size uh, drawing. Um, it's something maybe you can do while you're watching a video or TV. Uh, I'm going to just show you a few things up on the top of my paper. I'm going to apply it with a brush. You could apply it with a pastel blender, a brush. You can apply it with your fingers, but I'm going to tell you about what will happen if you do that. You can brush it on with your brush. The paper that I'm using is soft. It's not hot pressed and super coated smooth. Uh, if you try that, you'll only be able to get a very, very light gray. You can build it up. Uh, what I suggest doing is to make your little sketches, say 8 by 10 inches, and go over the whole area. First, you could do a light drawing with just a pencil, and um, it will show through. I would like you to get at least a 50% um, gray over the whole area where you're going to draw. Uh, if you want to use your fingers, you'll be able to get a much, much darker um, black or gray because of the oil in your fingers will mix with it and you'll actually be making a paint. And the oil from your fingers will be the medium. Uh, but then that will be either impossible or hard to remove. So you might want to save that for a dark accent. Another thing that you can do uh, and experiment on this at the edges of or on a page in your notebook you can use things like a white Crayola crayon or a white oil stick or even a little bit of mineral spirits on a brush or with a rag and that will be able to get a very, very dark black. Um, but once again, that would be hard to remove. So you want to experiment with that on just a scrap piece of paper. Uh, once we get our whole area gray, you're going to be first going through and finding the patterns of the light with an eraser. I'm going to be using a regular pencil eraser. You can use and experiment with all sorts of erasers, including the edges of them. And it's possible to get a very um, paintbrush almost feeling with it, as if you're doing white paint. Uh, while you're wor once you get your drawing fairly along, you'll be able to use pen and ink, Sharpie, bra black acrylic, um, if you want to go very, very dark. You can also go in with uh, white pencil or white Conte for some white accents. Experiment with that, too, because you don't want it to start to look muddy. Um, but also, all, it's always great if you have some real white areas. You might want to just leave them white from the get-go if you have some very shiny areas. Now I'm going to quickly move around. At this point, I'm covering over my drawing. I did not go dark enough. Oh, now there I can see some of my lines. I can also see where smudgy fingers were on the page. Um, be aware of that. You might want to, uh, for your finished drawings, make sure that you're using a clean piece of paper that hasn't been gummed up uh, with either your fingers or your doggy or your cat walking across it. You might get little paw prints. Uh, this works a little bit like the uh, CSI fingerprint dusting thing. Now, uh, once it starts to get fairly gray, I would go in and use your brush to make it a nice, smooth gray without the lines of the brush unless you have that pre-planned that that's going to be an important part. I'd like it to be very neutral without any markings. Now 
This is a nice, I'd say, 50% gray on the gray scale, a nice gray flannel. Down in this corner, it's darker. If you take the time and just keep working it in, the softer your paper, the darker you'll be able to get it with the paintbrush. But I would think most everyone should be able to get it at least a 50, maybe even 60 percent. If you have a Me Tens or another kind of paper that's very soft and absorbent, you might even be able to get up to 70. Now, I'm going to show you what happens if you touch it with your fingers. That's darker. My fingers are not that dirty, I guess. But you can get a, a fingerprint. If you put your, if your fingers go right into the thing. You should be able to get it darker. Uh, before I start drawing, I want to show you what, if you want to go in then later on and have a very dark dark, that's pencil. Here's a carpenter's pencil. Okay, now I'm going to move the dust down, put it into my little container. If anyone has asthma, um, maybe wear a little dust mask or a kerchief. This maybe could get to you. As drawing materials go, this is relatively non-toxic. Okay, now um, when I start my drawing, I'm actually going to be going in and sort of, instead of working dark to light, I'm going to go in just looking down on some little pictures, etc. And I'm just going to focus on one. Um, once I get the 50%, I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to, this is white, but it has a gray on this side. And you can get a painterly effect. The harder I press, here I'm going to press hard, the whiter it gets. We're getting the light bouncing off of this. It's the edge of a bowl here. I would do that all over and think of it as finding like your trail of light. Don't get too detailed in the beginning. Um, then every once in a while I'd sweep this off. If you make a mistake it's very easy to blend an area in if you want to make this grayer. Uh, all the things that I have are sort of ceramic and por porcelain. That's something that really lends itself to this. So does portraiture. And I'm going to be uh, posting a portrait, which I think may be done in oil stick. But you also would be able to get a um, similar look. I think you could do a very dramatic still life. I had to have a lot of light here. I think you could do a very nice night drawing, night portrait. Um, is it? I'm yeah. done? Oh, Did they get that last part? 
Okay.